Hey everybody, it's Jeff Challen. So in this series of videos, we're gonna talk about some common debugging techniques that we think will help you as you begin work on the machine project. And you know, these are you know techniques based on staff, observation and experience, and just some general things that we think will really help you, you know, get to the bottom when things don't go wrong, right? And and they'll help us help you on the help site and you know generally just just make this a more uh, pleasurable and less frustrating experience for everyone involved. Um, and so step zero, the, the thing that you really want to do sort of as much as you can as you're going is just keep things tidy, you know, keep things, you know, your code kind of under control, you know, keep it clean, keep it, you know, from, from sprawling and getting really, really ugly and, and terrible. And there's some straightforward ways to do that. So um, I've taken this part of the MP0 starter code and sort of like you know, mess with it a bit, uh, just to show you a couple of common problems, and and we'll talk about how to fix that. So, you know, badly formatted codes. So I've got a couple of blocks here um, in my code that I just can't see right now because the code is so badly indented. And and detect is throwing up some errors here. It's trying to help me with this. Um, and you know, your best strategy here is always keep this stuff, you know, in place in the right spot as you go. But you know, I know sometimes like maybe the stuff is a little bit off or whatever, and you might be looking for like a quick fix. So one way to do this is there is a keyboard shortcut in Android Studio that'll just take care of the situation and clean up everything for you. However, there's another option. Um, so if you go up here to the run configurations to see there's a format task and you can take this and you can run it. It's gonna run a little slowly the first time because it's starting up Gradle and doing some other things. Um, but you know, th this will run a little bit more quickly next time. And it's essentially going through all my code and formatting it. And so it's going to automatically take care of fixing some of the formatting and indentation errors that I've introduced in this code. And this is something that you can run as often as you want, as you develop to, you know, take, take care of things like this. Um, and so you'll see that it very nicely kind of like put things, uh, back, back in the right spot. Um, and, and address some of these things. Now, up here, I've got a problem that, that really shouldn't ever happen in Kotlin. I've got two statements on the same line. I'm gonna take care of fixing that by hand and, and move things back into place. Um, so, you know, as you're going, you know, if, if the code, particularly with indentation and white space, gets really disordered, it's very, very difficult to, to read and it's very hard to understand what's happening. And I've seen cases where, you know, just not being able to identify a block is really the thing that's sort of preventing a student from making forward progress. So, you know, as you're going, but certainly before you come to the help site for assistance, please make sure to tidy things up. Just run this task. You don't even have to do it by hand. It'll just sort of automatically do most of it for you. The other thing I've introduced into this code that I want to talk about is these big chunks of, of commented out code. And I just grabbed these from somewhere else in this file. But typically what happens, and it's understandable, is you're going along and you know you have something and, and it's not working and so you know you you're trying a different approach but you want to keep that old code around and a little bit of that's okay um, but when you get tons of it like here where I've got these big chunks of commented out code and I've got like tiny little bits of of working code in between it becomes very very difficult to read um, and so there's there's two things that you can do here right one is you can always like keep a scratch file somewhere and just move some of that in there. Um, I can move it, this, this commented out code, you know, down, he, down here, outside the method, right? Uh, just putting it somewhere else so that I don't have, so it's not obscuring my view of the code that I'm working on, right? Um, you can also use git to help you with this, right? So remember, when you commit something to git, it's there forever. Um, and, you know, as soon as you commit something, I'm going to take out this part, right? And what you're seeing is that this, this method that, you know, looked big and tall and, and difficult to scan has now been collapsed down to just those few lines that I really need to focus on. Because, you know, when you're debugging, you know, when you're trying to find problems and, and understand why your code isn't doing what it's supposed to do, having a lot of other stuff in the way is very distracting. Right? So it's almost like, you know, if you're, if you're doing something difficult sometimes, you know, or, or if someone has to focus on a really complex task at work, sometimes you, what you do is you just clear your desk off, right? You know, you get the clutter out of there. It really allows yourself to concentrate on the thing you're trying to do. And, and you know, code can also become cluttered. 
and that big chunks of commented out code. Well, again, I mean, I understand if you want to keep that around, you know, sometimes it's hard to write something and I do this too, where it's like, oh, I don't want that to go away. You know, particularly if I'm trying one of two approaches, I might, you know, put some comments in to, to use one rather than the other, because I'm like, I don't want to have to reproduce all that later. I get that. Um, but try to move it out of the way. Try to get it off to the side, below the method, above the method, in another file, maybe on a scratch pad somewhere, just out of the flow of what you're normally doing to allow yourself to really zero in on the parts that you need to, to think about. Okay, so step zero in our debugging checklist, um, tidy up, right? Run the formatting task, clean out any sort of big chunks of, of commented out code, you know, and, and this will be something that we will expect you to do before you come to the help site. Uh, if you come on the help site and you've got, you know, a, a bunch of, you know, a hot mess of, of code that's really unreadable, the staff member may tell you, hey, you know, really hard to help you given what's here. Why don't you spend some time cleaning that up? You know, I'll put you back at the, the back of the line. Next time you come up to the front, you know, hopefully you have that done. So, so just do this, you know, if you're waiting, go ahead and do it, you know. Um, but, but please, before you get assistance from the staff, you know, take some of these simple, even automated steps at this point to put your code in the best position for us to be able to help you effectively.